Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy holiday start to say Sunday morning over here. It's almost the end of the month. We have literally two more days, three more days, two more days if you don't count today because today doesn't even count. There's no such thing as the present. It's only the future and the past and that's why that's why things are so difficult. Anyways, uh, I wanted to go over some major things for the very, very long term here and discuss the topic of uh, is the low in or not or is the macro low in or not because obviously we've been speaking about a major low in since late November early December. Now the topic of macro low being in um, is going to be appropriate, I do believe, especially depending upon how this month of January closes. So a big focus on that today. I'm not going to be focused on anything in the shorter term time frame. So if you're looking for that sort of stuff, check out maybe yesterday's video. That's still very much relevant. Um, and yeah, other than that, I want to once again humbly request that if you do find this content valuable, useful, or meaningful, or even if you hate it, even if you literally hate it, Please do consider still liking and subscribing. Like, even if you just want to kill me, please do consider liking and subscribing. It's like it's like customer service. You know, it's like I hate your product. I absolutely hate you. Thank you for letting us know your feedback, sir. <laughs> Anyways, it's like so insufferable. Uh, anyways, uh, yes. So let's just jump right into it right now. And we're actually gonna start off here on the Crown Trading application. Uh, we haven't spoken about this in a while, or we have, you know. Uh, every so every few weeks or so it's just you know isn't relevant on like a day by day basis but the global open interest where I want to start this one because the global open interest did come down to levels here that we saw in December that were basically not seen since I think it was like uh, June, July of 2020 last. That was when Bitcoin was putting in uh, a major accumulation range, getting ready for a major macro breakout leading into the past uh, into the past cycle that we had. And so what does this essentially uh, imply? It, I'm not implying that exact thing, by the way. What I'm implying, however, is that when we see open interest essentially reset from all-time highs, when Bitcoin was literally at all-time highs, to where you know we essentially uh, bore in the last cycle, that would imply that the reset has happened. The overall over-leveraged positions, in fact, basically all leveraged positions, have been washed away, and the board is once again fresh and clean. So that is what we would expect leading into to a major macro reversal and in this case you know that can play into the rest of the analysis now of course that is not complete in and of itself so we need to go over here and i'll start this one off with the monthly stochastic also it's just the most tangible thing um, that's easiest to kind of define coming into uh what is it gonna when, when's the actual new month okay so today's 29 monday 30 tuesday 31 wednesday yeah so wednesday is going to be the first so on Wednesday, or basically Tuesday night on the 31st, if you see Bitcoin close above 17900 something very important will happen for the monthly here. What essentially is that going to be? Well, we're going to see the monthly stochastic oscillator turn up for the first time, basically, in this region since March of 2019, which... If you can follow the full chart here, you can see that all of the past times we've seen stochastic oscillator on the monthly crosses to the upside below the critical zone, they have correlated with, well, this area here, this area here, and this area here. Pretty fucking interesting, dare I say. Uh, in fact, just all of the crosses to the upside on the stochastic oscillator have been met with some pretty impressive upside price action, as we also saw here in September 2013, and also uh, in in July and August of uh, 2020 before these humongous runs um, as well. Now, there is one time where it did cross the upside, and it was actually just a major massive trap that was uh, in this past year. Um, uh, basically one year ago in January of 2020 uh, too. So ultimately, it's not a fail-safe sign, but I would say that crossing up in critical zones like this, well, you're more likely to play along these past iterations rather than this one, which is way up here in the bullish control zone. Um, so in that case, again, the magical number to close above at the end of this month, again, Tuesday night, 17,950, or Tuesday night, depending upon your time zone, um, as I've gone over over here, four to five hit rate for all crosses, um, for all crosses in the uh, in the in just the critical bear zone. Well, that would be uh, three out of three so far. And the average move born upon not all of them, I did not include all of them. I only included the ones again in the critical zone, because I thought that those were most uh, appropriate to well reference in our current trajectory. Um, the average move from that low to the next sort of major consolidation region was about 253 and a half percent. In fact, two of the past 
ones, the two most recent ones here and here, so that would be 2015 and uh, 2019 respectively, were basically literally like the same thing, 238%. Uh, so big move up right there, consolidate sideways and down. Yeah, that was the Rona time as well. And then of course over here, uh, you know, come off the lows, spend a lot of time going sideways and up, and then consolidation again. So ultimately, and 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 again over here in February 2012, uh, yeah, 2012, <clears throat> started there, um, same thing. Uh, the big ones were actually the ones that happened uh, here and here. So I did not include those ones because those ones were like, you know, 500 to 600%. And I just thought that that was not really, like it was clearly an outlier compared to the other ones. So there was a clear trend going on right there, at least from my, uh, from my perspective. Anyways, uh, yes, so... Again, is five prior times in history a great uh, sample size? Fuck no. That's the scientific term. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Um, but uh, but so far so good. And it's just the best that we can do that we can do with the data that we have. So you know that's you know I'd say a big counterpoint to that. All right, moving on now. Um, let's go into this chart. This is going to be a chart that uh, kind of does actually maybe reference the more short term. Um, you can see that Bitcoin is grinding up against the old the old supply. It's been tapped. And you all know what that means. <laughs> the supply has been tapped. The supply has been tippy tippy tapped. And now it's all over, guys. It's been a nice run. But the supply has been tapped. And it'll never be the same consequences will never be the same here uh yeah so a few things going on in this chart i'll first talk about the most bullshit of them although it has worked out and that would be the old falling pizza here i'm not a big pattern guy i think most patterns are jesus toast but in this case hey there's a bit of a falling pizza right here falling wedge if you want to call it in the more traditional way and that one did play out the measure move basically to the top side of a greater falling pizza a falling pizza that has been in progress basically since the all-time high of november 2021 so if you are, you know, looking at the relative short term to the general topic of this uh, particular video, well, you know, that, that would actually imply that we probably do see a bit of a pullback here in the short term. The yesterday's video goes over the conditions for that and the statistics and, uh, and, and what to kind of expect. Um, but that's not what this video is about. Now we've, now we've already seen the lower, you know, the smaller one play out, but the greater one, obviously, uh, that one would be initiated theoretically speaking, if you do, cl you know, close above the top side of the falling pizza uh, resistance, if you eat that fucking crust, you carb eating fuck. Um, but <laughs> where did that come from? I, you know what I really hate? I hate you non carnivores, man. No, I don't. I, I don't at all. In fact, I don't get religious about food or food choices. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like we need more God because otherwise people get religious about even dumber shit. So, you know, let's just let's just settle on that one. Uh, but yeah, the way that I think that these can actually work, just personally speaking, is that I wouldn't be looking at it as um, as a resolve to the upside until you trade back above the top side of uh you know of 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 this area right here which would be 25,250 basically the summer highs so bitcoin can close above there then yeah you do initiate the greater falling pizza all sorts of pe all sorts of pattern jesus toast believers are going to <laughs> are going to be telling you like the target will be the top side of the falling pizza um i think that that would be much too aggressive and it also doesn't get hit more often than not when these patterns actually do play out which is actually not that high anyways but um, but what does play out traditionally is, you know, is is kind of like the width of the actual um, uh, formation, which would actually be having a targeted region at fifty thousand bucks. So that's the biggest, baddest hoping that I can possibly give you. Do I think that's what's happening here? No, I, I think if Bitcoin does bust on through and we see some bust in action to the upside, you can't really bust to the downside, I guess. Um, so that's redundant. Uh, but, uh, you know, I do think that more than likely you would probably get stopped somewhere between the 0 0.5 and the 618th of an auto retracement here um, at 32,350 to 38,500 respectively. Um, so again, that would be maybe not relevant for this month, but perhaps coming into like March, if you will, if you start to see Bitcoin really close higher timeframes above about 25,000 and change. Um, you know, I'd be looking at especially like 32. 38 and a half, you know, I, th I think is also within the realm of reason. 50,000 personally speaking, I think would be like, like that's, you know, that's like the same thing as calling for 10,000 right now. Um, 
um, anyways, uh, so yes, and again, in the very, very short term, yeah, this place kind of makes sense for a pullback, all things considered, but uh, that's not the topic of today, and that's yesterday's video. Anyways, also what's going on here, and what I put a shit ton more weight on, and what we can actually build statistics off of, is this cross, the yellow 21 and the green 55 exponential moving average crosses, as you can see right here. Now, uh, when those cross, it's called the silver cross, and... Basically, it's one of the few moving average just blind crosses that I think uh, really matters a lot um, just for a general trend. And uh, it's not going to be the best timer of a move, obviously, but it's, it's going to generally be okay. Um, and what I've done is I've, got, if, is I've gone ahead and measured all the times that we've seen that cross um, to the upside in this case throughout the full history of Bitcoin and, well, found that from, from that cross... From that cross where price action was, the average move to the upside was about almost 82%. Um, which I should denote that yes, there were certainly some failures in there. Uh, so that is including the failures. And you can see that that's very obvious with the variance in the standard deviation here because some of the winners were just astronomically high. I mean, I did not include like the super astronomical high ones like this, like 1700%, but you know, 200% plus was certainly not out of the question. And some of them were incredibly low on the trap moves, like 12.5% over here that we did see in March of 2022 on the bull trap uh, last year. Um, but uh, but you know Bitcoin's kind of already passed what I would say is the is like the the bull trap region because if you were looking at this as a bull trap, well, from the cross to where Bitcoin currently is right now, we've seen about like thirty one percent move to the upside. Um, on all of the prior bull traps, they were like fifteen percent or less, I believe. Definitely less than 20%, but I even believe below 15%. So I'd say it's less likely. Uh, maybe there, okay, there's one other one where you could maybe argue it. This was a 30% move um, coming off of uh, January 2020 uh, that led into the Rona times. Possible, yes. Uh, but, you know, that kind of was a black swan at the same time. Anyways, if we do add about 82% to the where that cross was and see what where that'd be implying, well, what do you know? It'd be right in that blue. Oh, God. <laughs> Ten for the supply box, guys. It's gonna tap that supply, and then I'm gonna tap the fuck out. <sighs> Hopefully the gain is high enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there's that. Um. Anyways, moving on to the next big thing for the monthly. Uh, as always, you know we go over the accumulation distribution indicator. Um, we've been following this one basically ever since it turned back over here in July 2021, and basically all of the uh, turns or slope changes in the extreme zones have correlated with macro shifts and directions. Um, the you know the the ones from downside to upside have actually been a bit of uh, better on the timing side than the ones to the upside to the downside. But obviously, you know we're dealing with that one now, so that's actually well good to know, I suppose. Anyways, you can, I marked off all the other times that we've actually seen it change from down slope to up slope, um, or not on this particular one. Let me actually just, well, actually, I do have it over here, I think. There it is. These are all the times where it's actually changed from down slope to up slope uh, in the critical zone um, uh, below the threshold. And in this case, uh, actually, even on this one, it's starting to turn already, which is rather interesting. Uh, but I go off the index here because it's just, you know, it's the most longest running one and it seems to work the best and just uh, be the most smooth. What's interesting about this, however, is that if we go to the derivative exchanges, they're actually already getting upside slopes. Uh, here is Bybit. Bybit, like. <laughs> Bybit's fucking buying, <laughs> and uh, BitMexico, and I think even CME, yeah, CME as well. Um, so, you know, that would be also rather interesting, dare I say. What's also, I think, uh, very of note here is that um, anytime that we've seen the indicator itself turn from this green color to this red color, uh, what I've done is, as I've measured from that color change to the next major low, which has happened one, two, three, four, this would be the fifth time in Bitcoin's history, and found that there's been an average correction of about 61 spot, three, four percent. What's very interesting about this is that this past one is fucking bang on with that 61 spot, six, three percent on the low, uh, which is why we were kind of looking at 15 and a half thousand bucks, um, you know, for, well, for quite some time now. Uh, so ultimately, you know, I do think that it's, re it's reasonable, again, if you want to be super prudent to wait for the end of this month, uh, macro low could very well be in. Uh, again, major low, obviously, fucking obviously. Um, I don't think that's 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 not like a, uh, a crazy statement anymore. It might have been when I was saying it in like late November. Um, but a macro low, uh, yeah, you know, we're starting to see the puzzle pieces fit in. And 
I think it could be relevant. Here's the thing, though. Uh, even if it is a macro low, just like all the other macro lows, it might retest around the current low, like like reasonably close to it. You know, that could be like 20,000 or 19,000, right? Um, but yeah, you know, it, it just as an off, off note here, everyone always, everyone, people, a lot of the time, people like to talk about being a contrarian and how you should be a contrarian in the markets. Like everyone should be a contrarian, right? Everyone should be a contrarian because that makes sense, right? Because we're you're so fucking smart, you're so fucking virtuous to be the only contrarian when everyone knows that you should be a contrarian. <laughs> um, but you know, if you truly want to be a contrarian right now, uh, what would be the most crazy thing that you could say? The most crazy thing you could say is Bitcoin's gonna bust through supply. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's gonna be that uh, that uh, a recession is not gonna happen in the next year, or it's not gonna be as bad. Because um, that seems to be the one thing that almost everyone does agree on, and uh, and well, yeah, that's the one thing that I feel like everyone agrees on. Everyone's been posting for the past year, recession coming, bro. I think the recession was already here and happened. And like, we're kind of maybe even working our way out of it. I don't, I don't fucking know. I'm not, I'm not an economist or I actually do have a degree in economics, but I can assure you, I know nothing fucking about it because my degree is worthless. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So there's that. Uh, the next chart over here, hash ribbons, another fundamental, fundamentally based chart. Um, this one is very, very interesting because it has printed a blue buy signal. What does that mean? It means that, well, based off of the, all the other times, it's printed a blue buy signal. Those have all been major, uh, major, and in some cases, macro lows. And more importantly, out of all of the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 times that we've seen it, uh, sorry, 17, because this would be the 18th time here, uh, 16 of those 17 times, the price action never closed lower than the prior low. Um, when I say close lower, I mean fucking close, because I always get comments about this. Dude, it, it traded lower below on this one over here. It's like, dude, close, close. Do you understand close? Do you understand the word fucking close? Um, sorry. Uh, but uh, but yeah, anyways, um, so, uh, so, you know, Oh, and by the way, you know the, the the one time where it didn't work out was actually the most recent one, just so you know. Uh, but we never got the we never got the blue buy signal on the weekly, I should say. Um, or yeah, sorry, yes we did. Yeah, it, it happened over here, and yeah, it was fucked. Um, Thirty nine thousand bucks. So obviously that was not true in that regard. Uh, but since then, it has been true um, every time. Um, so what's also interesting about this is that uh, I calculated the average move after the blue buy signal um, before the next correction. And on average, it was like 62%. Um, so this officially fired off here. So it'd be on this week here. And 62% would put Bitcoin where? About 27,500 bucks. Um, so yeah, you know, again, looks interesting, dare I say. And we can move on to the next chart. This is just looking at good old, uh, good old traditional indicators. And what do we have? A couple of things going on. One, hidden bullish divergence on the monthly RSI. Hey, that's how Bitcoin bottomed in 20, uh, 2018, 2019, and also how it bottomed over here in 2015 as well. And if we uh, go and reference the monthly jewel, what do you know? The monthly jewel upon closure in this month of January is going to have a chance to turn white. And uh, and if it does turn white, well, it, within this region and also on this trend line, which would also be hidden bullish divergence between all of the last uh, three macro uh, lows, then well, this was the prior, this was the first result, this was the second result, and potentially you might see the third time, which makes a trend as well. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, here's a five-day chart. It's still viable. Still, it's still relevant. It's just it's not closing until tomorrow, but uh, still does suggest that you know in the next few weeks here we probably still see upside, um, even if there is a short-term pullback. Short-term pullback again could come as low as like twenty-one thousand or so. Um, and I would, I, I always, as always, need to need. Hey, damn it, uh, need to provide an invalidation for this. Uh, so what would make me bearish as fuck? Well, if Bitcoin goes back below about twenty thousand bucks. That would do it. <laughs> that would probably be probably do it, especially on a higher term time frame clo closing basis. Uh, but yeah, that's been about nineteen minutes too long of a video, so I apologize. Um, but uh, hopefully that was in some way helpful. Um, I want to once again give a shout out to Bybit's promotion going on. They got zero percent on maker fees for derivative contract orders, which is actually really really valuable for more active traders, uh, which you may or may not uh, like for yourself. There, that is available to you in the link in the description below. I believe it's only with that link in the description below. Um, at least that's what I'm told. And yeah, as always, 
wishing you the best of the best. Take care, much love, and see you hopefully soon.